Hi, my name is Mara Hummel. Uh, I come originally from Pharma Development Global. I have a background of 20 years of experience in clinical research, and I joined the Roche Digital Innovation Lab about one and a half years ago now. Um, I've been working there on several different initiatives like the InnoLab experience, but also uh, I'm leading the neuroscience work stream within the InnoLab. I also was the one organizing Femtech, among other uh, projects and initiatives. I think uh, we will see a lot changes in changing in the next five to ten years, uh, specifically in clinical trials. Uh, I think we tend to do things the same way uh, we used to do them uh, in all these years. And I believe this, this is the time for us to change. I think we will see a lot in um, decentralized trials, in uh, the use of technology and AI in terms of synthetic data, of uh, real-world evidence, of even digital twins uh, eventually, um, trying to really accelerate clinical development and really shorten the timelines that we need to get a drug to the patient because in the end that is what we are supposed to be doing, right? And nowadays it takes us 12 years uh, to develop a medicine in average and it costs about two to three billion uh, and that needs to change. I see a lot of opportunities uh, and I think a lot needs to be done and changed. I see also healthcare, uh, you know, changing from what we have today that is more sick care to really healthcare, meaning prevention and prediction. And uh, I think that's also going to go in the direction of personalized healthcare. Um, and I see also uh, challenges, of course, because for a lot of these things, we will need to have the buy-in from regulators, for example. Like we were speaking just now about synthetic arms and about digital twins, and we could eventually use all of that data sets to run shorter clinical trials or have trials with um, a synthetic control arm. But nowadays, that is not accepted by our regulatory authorities uh, for the dossier for approving a drug for commercialization, and that is something that will need to change in, in the upcoming years. I love this question because I believe that many times at Roche we think about innovation whenever we are launching a medicine, whenever we are um, going to market and we have issues with accessing the, the patients or reaching really the patients. And I believe that we have to start thinking about innovation from the very beginning, from the preclinical even. And I understand the focus is like when you are starting in preclinical, you don't know how your drug is going to make it and whether it's going to make it. So you don't start to build a lot of things on top of your drug, right? But on the other hand, if you have a very good candidate, you want to be prepared, right, for when you come to launch or co and commercialization. And I think that is starting to change. I see um, really a shift also in the way the organization is looking at it. And I think the way we, we can really make an impact is by shortening the, the timelines for development and that starts from preclinical or even before that. I think we see a lot of that today because everyone is, for example, so excited about ChatGPT and what ChatGPT can do and everyone is talking about large language models, right, and all of this technology. And yes, there is some time of hype there, and I think we should use the hype to experiment, right, and to test things. Um, it's not going to change our reality from one day to the other, unfortunately. There, we need to try things, we need to test. We are dealing with patients, so we just cannot go out there and, and sell something to customers, right? What we do is, is healthcare. Um, so there are a lot of regulations and things and, and compliance and GDPR and a lot of frames that we need to be 
to take care of. That's a really nice one. And the reason is I find many times um, startups struggle with us and we with them. And the reason is um, I believe we have to be very, very clear in terms of expectations. Uh, some startups might really be thinking about partnering, while others might be thinking about building up something and selling it to a pharma company. And those are just different expectations, right? And I think we need to be transparent on that. I think they can benefit from us because we do have a lot of expertise uh, in our company. We, we do have a lot of resources and normally a startup it has a determined number of people, right, and is, is small and doesn't have access to the experts, to the relationships with the regulators and stuff like that. On the other hand, they also don't have all of the organization behind them, which means they are quicker, they can move faster, and they don't have so many processes and things that hinders them in their development. So. I think there is both strengths and weaknesses, and weaknesses on both sides, and we have to be intelligent on how to merge those and make the best out of it. InnoLab is a lot of things, uh, a very cool group of people wanting to try uh, a lot of different things, having great ideas and discussions, being really open. Uh, connecting both inside and, and outside of the company.